Tan Gardening, everybody. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about some of the seeds that we're getting started indoors here in April in Zone 5, Wisconsin. You know, one of the things I love about this time of year is that it is definitely heating up out there. We've had a couple of days now in the 80s, and of course that's Fahrenheit for those of you wondering. But one of the things you have to remember, especially in these cooler growing zones like Zone 5, Wisconsin, there is still potential for snow, in April, there's still potential for some cooler days. We have a couple of nights upcoming that's gonna be below 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that being said, there are quite a few seeds we can start indoors, some of which we could have started a couple of weeks ago, but you know, no matter how well prepared or planned out you are, sometimes you get busy with other things you have to take care of, and well, time can go by. So what we're gonna to do today is not let any more time pass, but get these seeds planted indoors so that we can get them transplanted here within a couple of weeks as that temperature begins to stay consistently warmer. Let's go ahead and get started with our Swiss chard. Well, I'm gonna say it just as I see it, Swiss chard is one of the most unique tasting greens in my opinion. I absolutely love the taste of Swiss chard. I love the smell of Swiss chard. We often steam it, although I know you can eat it raw in salads as well. I think it smells a lot like hay, which brings back a ton of memories from my childhood. So I'm gonna be planting these at about a half inch depth. And for those of you who haven't seen my earlier videos, you might not know that the mix that we're running here is primarily coco cure, a little bit of peat moss, and perlite, that's it. And I've just used a strainer to make the particles a little bit smaller in here. We found better success with growing our seeds this way. Now, this type of container, this setup is one of several that I'm using this season to start our seeds in. You may have seen our video where we talked about starting newspaper pots. And we also showed you a video where we made our seed starting containers out of toilet paper and paper towel rolls, as well as soil blocks. So if you haven't checked out those videos, this is just one option out of many that we're starting our seeds in this season. You know, Swiss chard only takes about a week, maybe 10 days to germinate. We could have this transplanted in late April if we'd started it about a week and a half or so ago. As is, we may get this outdoors a little bit late, but it can actually handle the cool weather pretty well. It doesn't mind a light frost, that's for sure. This is a great fall crop as well. And you get a harvest here within about 40 to 50 days, 60 days, I would say maximum. You can start harvesting this early, much like you can with your spinach as well. And it's not too picky with heat. You can have just basic room temperature almost, 60 degrees or so heat whenever it comes to germination temperatures. For those of you who didn't see my earlier videos, I'd like to remind you that I do label everything. I think that's really important, including putting a date on here. I do water my mix underneath instead of top watering to avoid mold and other kinds of algae, etc. forming. And the setup that I'm using today, we bought online from Amazon and there is a built-in light and a humidity dome here. We're gonna get this plugged in and I'm gonna go ahead and plant some more. We'll have a link to this setup in the description. All right, next up we have lettuce. Now lettuce, like our Swiss chard, enjoys the cooler temperatures. And once you get it out into too much heat, you're gonna find that it's more likely to bolt quickly. So this is something, again, we could have started a couple of weeks ago. At this point, our transplant time outdoors is probably gonna be early May instead of late April, which is what we would prefer. Now there are so many different varieties of lettuce available out there. You find one that you like the taste of, you like the look of, and you'll be just fine. This lettuce comes with our green stalks. When we purchase them, they often send free seeds. And this is one of the free seeds that they sent us. And we have some Tom Thumb here from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. And then again, the survival garden seeds that were sent to us for free. These are the Lola Rosa. Now, whereas you have the seed pods for the Swiss chard, these individual seeds are much smaller. Our depth for planting these is about a quarter inch. And I'm just gonna spread four or five of the seeds here. And I'm gonna do, again, a couple of different varieties. This Lola Rosa, I think, looks really cool. I'm gonna do a much bigger planting than just this particular variety here. But for now, so you can see what it looks like, again, I'm just spreading four or five seeds in each one. And I'll definitely come back through and thin this out as they start to develop. We actually did a YouTube short on transplanting lettuce 
I'll put a link to that in the description and I'll show you what that looks like a little bit here. But you can definitely transplant this outdoors once it's reached a couple inches in height. And I love the fact that we can start harvesting lettuce as quickly as about a month into the process. All right, next up we have our cantaloupe. And I'd really love for you to leave a comment and let us know your opinion on growing cantaloupe. You know, it wasn't until I would say last year where we had some decent success with our cantaloupe. We really struggled to get it to develop and ripen on the vine for a couple of reasons, I think, but I'm not gonna go into that now, but I wanna know your opinion. How has your success rate gone for growing cantaloupe? It's one of my favorite types of fruit. I like it just as much as I like watermelon, and I like watermelon a lot, but let us know in the comments your experience. I got a couple of different varieties I'm interested in planting this season. I've got a Duchess hybrid. It's about a 73 day variety, a top mark cantaloupe. These are some of the last Praxis seeds out there, I think. And then this Hearts of Gold Melon looks really interesting to me as well. Now we're gonna be transplanting these outdoors sometime in late May, maybe early June. Take a look at these. These look nice and healthy to me. And we're gonna be planting these at about a half inch to an inch depth. And I am gonna, again, plant two in each of these cubes here, two in each of these squares, because I don't want anything to come up empty. I wanna give us the best chance at germination here. So I'm gonna go half of this variety, and I'm gonna pick one of the other varieties to plant for the other half. And again, I'll be planting more in other types of containers. Now, whereas my spinach and my Swiss chard could handle 55 to 65 degrees during germination, for these cantaloupe, we're gonna want somewhere between 80 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which means a heating mat would come in nice and handy. And again, we should see germination here in about a week. Could be a little bit faster, could take a little bit longer. Next up, we've got our zucchini. This is another vegetable we're gonna be transplanting outdoors in late May to early June. Now, when it comes to our summer squash and our zucchini, we like to start some now, and we like to start some every couple of weeks so that if we have something like the squash vine borer, which is something we've definitely dealt with as a pest before, we have plants ready to go in their place. And since these don't take all that long to go ahead and get started and producing fruit, it pays to have more ready to go because you can always start and plant some additional ones as the season goes along. Now, some of these are from our garden last season, but for all of these, my goal here is about an inch depth. These are much bigger seeds than a lot of the other pieces that are going in here. So we definitely wanna get down to about that inch depth. And again, I'm gonna sow two in each one our goal is to make sure we have plants here. Here's some of our Black Beauty Zucchini, again from Survival Garden Seeds. We'll get these all planted down in here and ready to go. I love the taste of zucchini. They're typically pretty quick growing. We've seen harvests as quick as 45, maybe 50 days. Some of them take a little bit longer, but once they're producing, if you can keep them healthy, you're gonna end up with some really good eating. All right, let us know in the comments what your favorite zucchini recipe is. All right, next up we have our watermelon. And I'll tell you, the Sweet Beauty watermelon is one of our favorites, one we've had some pretty good luck with. It's not all that big. And this variety is only supposed to take about 60 days. So it's one of the faster growing watermelon out there. Most of the other ones are 80 to 90 days. Now these are smaller than the zucchini. So the depth for these, a half inch to an inch. The thing that you have to remember about watermelon, I think this is important just in general, oh, we got three in there, is that when you're planting it, you have to remember how big these plants get, these vines get on these. And so you're gonna need a pretty good amount of space if you're planning to successfully grow watermelon. And for these, much like our cantaloupe, we want about 80 degrees Fahrenheit during germination, and that should happen in the course of about a week. All right, we got our Sweet Beauty, and now I'm gonna try some of these Crimson Sweet from Survival Garden Seeds. And we'll get these in it again at a half inch. These are gonna be transplanted outdoors late May, early June. So now's the great time to get these started. April is such a busy month when it comes to getting our seeds ready for going outdoors. And there's a couple of different seeds that we're gonna be planting directly outdoors here in the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that. 
I think you should try to keep count of the number of times I say something is one of my favorites. I really haven't found much in the way of vegetables I don't care for, but cucumbers are absolutely fantastic. I love refrigerator pickles, so easy to make. And I'm gonna go ahead and plant a couple of different varieties of cucumbers as well. The cucumbers I'm planting right now are from Guten Gardening. We've got quite a few cucumbers that we've been able to save the seeds from, including a Sikkim cucumber, rare cucumber. But this is just a standard good eaten cucumber. I didn't even write down the variety we harvested it from, but I know that these seeds are going to be even better than the ones we planted the first time because this is year number two with these cucumbers. Year number two typically means that the seeds are starting to adapt to our soil and by year number three we should see some really fantastic results. Now cucumber takes about a week to germinate, a week to 10 days, and it really enjoys warmer germinating temperatures of about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So another heat mat, a seed heat mat, will be really good to get this off to a great start. I've got these at about a half inch depth and these are gonna go outdoors and be transplanted in late May to early June. All right, last but not least for this video, we've got our pumpkin. And when I talk about pumpkin, I mean pumpkin and also our winter squash. We're starting them at the same time. And two that I'm gonna plant today are a small sugar pumpkin. I really like these actually steamed really nicely and Canada Crookneck, one of our absolute favorites, if not our favorite type of winter squash. Both of these absolutely delicious. We plant these at about an inch in depth. You can get away with about a half inch as well. And these are gonna be transplanted outdoors again, late May, early June. We have had some fantastic results with our Canada Crookneck. I love the taste. And when it comes to pumpkin, there's a pretty nice range that it can handle at time of germination, anywhere from about 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So they're not as sensitive and they'll take about a week to germinate, give or take a couple of days. As always with anything that you're planting, germination isn't exactly an exact science. So you could see them germinate a little bit faster you could see them take a little bit longer. But one thing's for sure, while I'm planting two in each one of these, I will be able to separate these out. And much like our watermelon, I gotta keep in mind that these are gonna take up a bunch of space once they've matured on the vine. And so I gotta keep that in mind as I'm deciding how many of these to plant or if I have the space. Well, folks, you can see how well these capture humidity here once they are up and running. The soil has absorbed up the moisture nicely. I've got a couple more to plug in now that I've got them planted, but these are on their way to be transplanted here in a couple of weeks. Folks, as a reminder, we have other vegetables and seeds that we're gonna start outdoors and directly sow here in the next couple of days, but don't take your plants out too quickly. Look at the forecast ahead. Remember where you are, look for that last frost date, that average last frost date, and let that be your guide because you don't want all the work that you've put in to get your seedlings up and going all winter long to be wasted because you're a little bit anxious to get outdoors. Believe me, we're gonna be outdoors very soon. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's video and got some useful information from it. We hope you're out there planting and ready for spring. If you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.